Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Sarah Murphy, and I'm here with my colleague, Sam Kartsos. Hello. Uh, today we're talking about user experience, the user experience of captioning. Thanks to everyone who joined us to today. Before we begin, I want to let you know that we are captioning this webinar. Um, and you can access the live captions by following the link to recap.com. It's uh, we we posted a link in the in the chat. Um, so if you look in the little chat window, you'll see a link to the URL where live captions are available for this webinar. We're also recording this webinar, and we'll share the archive with you as soon as we can. You can submit questions via chat or the questions feature in GoToWebinar. And I'm going to try to address all of the relevant questions and topics at the end, so please send your thoughts as we go. And if we don't get to your question during the webinar, we'll respond to you directly in an email. To get started today, we're going to talk about captioning. I'm curious to see what everyone's experience with captioning is. Are you a consumer of captions? Are you producing captions? And in what areas are you using them? And whether caption quality is a concern for you? Um, and I'm just going to open up a poll. This one? Yeah. Launch. So um, while we wait for your responses, let me turn it over to Sam. We're talking about user experience and captioning. Can you give us an introduction? Sure. Thanks, Sarah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining as well. Um, so why don't I just start by defining UX and captioning so we have a common frame of reference for what we're talking about today. Uh, so let's start with captions. Um, you know, the, this is a savvy audience, but let's just go over some basic uh, terminology. Uh, captions provide a text equivalent of the audio contained in video, and that would include speech, but also other sounds. And that text is then timed to the media, and it displays on screen. Um, and also, when when I use the word, you know, captioning. Um, I mean it in the broadest sense because sometimes it's associated with broadcast captioning standards you know in the US uh, when I refer to captioning I also you know mean subtitles uh, in the same language uh, sometimes they're referred to as subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing um, and while broadcast is certainly an important medium that that needs to be captioned I think it's just as relevant for web video since, uh, you know, in fact, there's far more video being published on the web every day than there is uh, broadcast. Uh, in terms of UX, you know, Sarah mentioned that stands for user experience, and this is a concept that's gained a lot of, you know, ground in design and web development circles. Um, there's fewer and fewer designers these days and more and more UX designers or UX UI designers. And uh, it's a good thing, I think, you know, as we spend more and more time interacting with applications online and we turn to our smartphones, uh, it seems almost, you know, every minute of the day, it's important that we consider how users interact with them and how they perceive them. Um, are they efficient? Are they well structured? Is it confusing or is it clear and intuitive? Um, and, and you know, a good UX designer might even take accessibility into, into consideration. Uh, but you know, what can happen, and it does happen quite a bit, um, which is probably not a surprise to, to this audience, is that the designers of websites and products and apps are so focused on the architecture, the visual design, 
the perfect button, clear and effective content, and the myriad other things that go into creating a positive experience for users that when it comes to accessibility, you know, I guess a lot of that creative energy has been expended. And often there isn't as much attention paid to the user experience of the accessibility features that are, that are being offered. Uh, so one of the things that, you know, I'm here to talk about today is that it, it does matter and you can improve the UX and friendliness of the accessibility features, uh, you know, of your websites and of your videos in particular, you know, related to, to captioning. So that's what we're going to talk today about today. And uh, I guess that's, a, you know, as good a segue as any to move into talking about UX in terms of captioning. Um, so when we're, when we're captioning video, um, it's important to consider it through that UX lens. Is it usable? Are people satisfied with the experience? Um, how do users interact with the captions? How do we structure information? Um, and since captions are an element that are used with video, we should keep in mind you know, how the two uh, work together. Uh, in the same way that you know we aim for websites that are friendly and, and easy to use, that should be our goal when it comes to, to captions as well. People generally aren't clicking on captions and uh, there's no drop down menus in them that, that I've found anyways. So when we talk about ease of use in captions, we're primarily talking about easy cognitive processing of captions. Uh, in other words, you know, structuring our captions so that they're easily consumed by users without too much effort, which helps ensure um, that users can both read the captions as well as watch the video at the, at the same time. So that's my overly long introduction. Great. Thanks, Sam. That's a really good introduction and jumping off point for our exploration of user experience and captioning. But first, let's take a look at the poll results. <laughs> so it looks like a lot of people are using captioning for education and because of the law, mostly. Um, and it's not surprising that a lot of our audience today is working with captions. And this ties back to an earlier webinar that we held titled The Why and How of Online Captioning, where you spoke to the captioning quality and how we are using automation to drive quality. We had a lot of great feedback from that, and so I thought we could focus more closely on the user experience of captioning for our follow-up today. Your definition of user experience is helpful but you don't speak to who the use are in user experience that we're addressing. Yeah, the, the users, right? So, um, well, the, you know, users who are deaf and hard of hearing are, are certainly the most important audience that captioning addresses because they rely on captions for access to the content. Um, and the captions are an essential element of their overall experience with the, with a video. Um, and in, in terms of the total audience, it's a really significant chunk of users. We're talking, you know, about somewhere between 15 and 20 percent of all users who have some degree of, of hearing loss. And it's, you know, it's especially pronounced in older populations. So as we collectively age as a society, I think that number is, is only in increasing. Um, but, but that doesn't mean it's the only audience that uses captioning. Um, I think users find captions beneficial for, for a number of reasons. Um, I'm sure most people have experienced captions when a television is on in a, in a restaurant or bar. Um, so it's ideal for noisy environments, but also quiet ones for hearing users uh, when they can't turn up the, the speakers. 
Um, it's also helpful for users who are learning English. Um, you know, I watch most media with captions on. Part of it is, uh, you know, research, but I actually prefer caption media. And while, you know, I don't have any any stats, I've met many people who have that, you know, that that same preference. Um, so. I generally watch all of my media online with captions on, um, provided it's you know available. And I even watch a lot, you know, a lot of uh, television and you know things like that at home with captions on as as well. And that makes a lot of sense to me personally because I've benefited from subtitles as well. I use them to help learn Spanish, and since working with SyncWords, I watch a lot of online media with captions on when it's an option, and I find that it helps in a lot of ways. Um, and I know we're going to talk about approaches to providing positive user experience with captions, but I'm curious, is there such a thing as UUX, unfriendly user experience? Um, before we focus on the positive, what defines bad user experience in captioning? Yeah, certainly there's, there's bad captioning experiences. Uh, so hopefully, uh, w you know, today we're going to try to educate and help um, alleviate that, that problem to reduce the number of uh, unfriendly uh, user experiences. Um, the, I guess the, the worst experience is being left out, you know, no, no access. And I think everyone has experienced that, not re necessarily related to captioning, but you know, I'm sure in other areas of life and being left out or ignored, you know, not considered or, or value is a pretty, you know, crappy feeling. <laughs> uh, so now imagine dealing with that experience, you know, day in, day out, related to your work life, you know, and in play. Um, you know, it's, it's hard for people to really appreciate what that's like if you're a hearing user, myself included. Uh, but I think it's safe to say that when a video isn't captioned and a user is effectively shut out, that the experience is a very negative one. Um, so I would say no captions, is, you know, is an overwhelmingly bad user experience related to, to video. <clears throat> I would say a close second is uh, like bad accuracy of content in, in captions. Um, and in particular, I'm thinking about the, the kind of automated captions that are produced by YouTube. I, I don't mean to single out YouTube, but I mean it's obviously it's a, something that a lot of people are familiar with, but other speech engines. Uh, is, is as well. Um, so if the content of the captions is way off, um, then you know once again users are left without access for for the most part. And I think users who are cons you know consumers of caption are savvy enough to know what they're getting when they watch automatically um, generated captions. But there's a you know sizable audience that that is not. Um, and there's some really, you know, misleading numbers out there. People will hear that a speech engine might provide, you know, 70 or, you know, 80 percent accuracy, and they feel, you know, they might feel, you know, great, that gets us 75 percent of the way, and, uh, you know, our audiences are just missing out on a on a quarter of the of the content, and that's better than nothing, you know, right? Or you know, we'll we'll use this automation to get us, you know, three quarters of the way through, and we'll do some work on the on the remaining, you know, on on the remaining twenty five percent. But if you if you work in this business and if you're f familiar with the reality, I think you realize that when one out of every you know three words is inaccurate, you end up with something that is, you know, primarily garbage. You know, the all of the inaccurate words really end up affecting the meaning of the content that's adjacent to it, of entire sentences, of paragraphs, and all the way on up, you know, 
through the through the full document. Um, so in so in my opinion, you know, the way I would approach it, anyways, would be to just scrap that and start transcribing from from scratch. Um, either that, or spend nearly as much time cleaning it up to to make it accurate. Um, but you know, but aside from the, these are egregious cases, cases, right? No captions or really bad uh, accuracy within the content of the captions. There's really there's a spectrum of bad captioning experiences, and many of the many of the problems are sort of the flip side of what we're going to discuss today, right? Accurate transcripts, precise timing, effective chunking, and and so on. Yeah, I agree with all of that. I found that when I'm watching TV with captions on and the text not is all caps, it's a little bit overwhelming, and I definitely prefer mixed case captions. Um, and the scrolling of captions is also something I find distracting uh, compared to um, captions that pop on and off the screen, especially when they come in in large bursts. I feel like I'm missing out on the show because I'm too busy anticipating what the next word will be to actually pay much attention to what's, what's going on on screen. Yeah, I, I, would, uh, I would agree absolutely with every one of those points and I think um, I think maybe we should you know we should at some point do a webinar where we deal with you know the UX of, of live captions um, because there's you know there's a unique set of issues that pertain to, to live captioning that's quite different from uh, captions for pre-recorded media that we often uh, referred to as offline captions. Um, they're, they're quite different and today, you know, I'm going to focus primarily on captioning for, for pre-recorded uh, media. Okay, so we know what defines a bad user experience and we're focused, what we're focused on today is captions for pre-recorded media. Uh, now that we know what not to do, can you sum up what are the relevant elements we need to pay attention to to create high quality captions that provide a positive user experience. Yeah, sure. So let's get to the meat of the of the webinar. And there's there's five areas that I'd like to touch on today that you know I think define the experience that users have with with captions. And those five are transcription, timing, chunking, positioning, and, and styling. Um, and the, you know, the subtext of our discussion is also how automation can improve the UX of, of captioning. And I'll just point out that some of those five items I mentioned are related to the work that we're doing in in our own caption automation platform called SyncWords, and some of them are outside of it. Uh, and we are automating some elements, but other elements we're, we're not automating. Okay, so let's delve a little bit deeper and go through these one by one. Um, tell me about transcript. How does that affect the user experience? Okay. And I, I'll just point out also that this information, I think, is, is useful whether you're using sync words or not. If you're creating captions the old-fashioned way by, by hand, I think that this is uh, you know, e equally valid and, and just as useful whether you're a sync words user or not. Um, so I've already ranted a bit about uh, bad transcripts coming from ASR speech engines. So I think you know, what's important to know is that Transcripts are the foundation of, of good captions. So accuracy is key. You know, at a, at a minimum, you want accurate verbatim transcription of what's spoken, um, as well as other meaningful auditory information. Um, but this webinar isn't about what's the bare minimum you, you have to do. It's about positive user experiences. So, when you're 
transcribing, there are, are style considerations as, as well. So when I'm transcribing something, should I write out in words, you know, five dollars? Or should I use the dollar sign symbol and, and the number five? Or if, you know, numbers, dates are spoken, you know, how would I transcribe that? How should I label speakers? When is it appropriate to use certain kinds of punctuation and ellipses? Um, and part of it is about style and consistent application of conventions, but it also relates to, you know, economy of words and space, which, um, you know, which conventions improve readability in a fast-paced environment because, you know, it's important to remember that captions move quickly. Um, it's uh, sort of the antithesis of self-paced, uh, you know, reading. Uh, you're reading at, at the video's pace. Um, and I think the, the, you know, luckily there are some very good guidelines that are available that address a lot of these issues of style. Um, one, uh, the, the, the DCMP offers what are called the captioning key guidelines, and DCMP stands for the Described and Captioned Media Program, which is uh, an initiative of the National Association of the Deaf. Uh, another great resource is the Chicago Manual of Style. Um, you can use you know, you can, you can use these guidelines as exactly that, guidelines. It's not a substitute for your own judgment or, or creativity. Um, like, as an example, you might have a convention for, for labeling speakers. You know, it might be that on the first instance of a speaker talking, you're providing their full name, and on subsequent instances, you switch to the person's last name. Uh, but now you have a video that incorporates speaker IDs into the video itself. You might choose to leave speaker labels off of your captions uh, in, entirely. Um, so let me, let me bring the topic of automation back into the discussion because I think as, as techies were excited by, by innovation, uh, but we've really stayed away from transcript automation for the many reasons I, I mentioned earlier. In, in SyncWords, we encourage users to come with their media and their, their transcript. If users don't have a transcript, we can create one for them, but it goes through human hands start to finish. Um, at, at the same time, I know that you know, some SyncWords users post their own transcripts, and those are generated, you know, sometimes through a, a trained ASR program like Dragon, and I'm, I'm sure other tools uh, as well. And since we expect that some users will come to SyncWords with transcripts that are less than ideal, we've focused on providing tools and different ways to help users make edits to those transcripts so that the output will be as accurate as possible. Well, wow, thank you. That's a lot of great information about transcription. Do you want to tell us about timing as an element? How does timing affect the user experience? Sure, yeah. This is uh, you know, pretty straightforward. There's, uh, there's kind of two aspects to timing to consider. The first is precision. So um, greater accuracy in terms of timing leads to a better user experience. When it, when it comes to timing, uh, professional captioning is really about a high degree of precision. Uh, typically, we're talking frame accuracy. That should be our goal. Um, you know, I've had one person describe badly timed captions to me as similar to the effect of watching video that has its audio out of sync. And uh, 
you know, if you've experienced that, it can be quite distracting, and I, I assume that that's the case for 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 most people. So, you know, you can you can have the same sort of effect on a user who's relying on captions to have text appearing well in advance or well after it's actually spoken can be uh, quite distracting. The second element is uh, to timing is is duration. You want to keep your captions up long enough for for users to read them and and that can be a challenge because you know I mentioned earlier you're moving at the pace of the action and speech in your video and you know you have to sort of keep pace with that you also don't want to keep them up too long um, and generally captions don't stay on screen for more than several seconds. So how about automation? I know that's certainly one area where SyncWords employs automation. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, to, to get frame accurate captions done by hand is really a painstaking and, and time consuming process. And automation can do wonders with timing. And we've been working to get it perfect under, you know, a diverse range of conditions, really challenging conditions. So when speech is combined with music and noise or you have, uh, you know, bad audio or speech is really uh, faint, uh, even when people are talking over each other. Um, and, you know, I think what's, what, what's interesting in automation related to timing, and this is the approach we use in SyncWords, is that it goes a step further than, than most media that's captioned by, by humans, that we, we time each and every word. So every word has a, a start and an end time. Um, when, when, a, when a human captioner is timing media, you know, in, in almost every case, you're chopping up text into chunks and then timing them against the media. When, when you have word level timings, you can really do some wonderful things like export different style captions for, for, for different purposes. Uh, you know, say, you know, something for broadcast that's limited to 32 characters per line, but something a bit longer for, say, captions for, for web video. Um, so uh, back on the, the five key elements, I noticed that you have a lot of notes about this next topic, chunking. Um, does that mean how you split up your captions? Yeah, exactly. Chunking is all about how we break up our, our transcript into uh, manageable chunks of information that we then will time with our with our with our media. So sounds like creating good chunks could be really time consuming. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm just a little a little lost here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there's um, there's there's a there's a number of factors that we take into consideration when we're when we're chunking text. So one of them, so w like we there's there's a couple of factors that that we really want to consider. So one is the timing. Again, this factors into how we chunk text. There's the length, there's syntax, and then there's also um, the issue of proportionality. Um, so this is this is a great slide because I think it illustrates the you know point about uh, length. You don't want your captions to be you know too long. You want to provide digestible chunks of information that are easily read by user. And chunking very much relates to what I mentioned earlier about ease of cognitive processing of, of captions. 
can you go back one slide, sure. sir? Okay, great. Well, this is another you know interesting aspect of uh, of of chunking where you know you also want to chunking not only sort of considers how we're breaking up our text to time it against the, the media, but also how we're splitting information uh, across lines. And one of the more challenging scenarios when we're captioning is when we have multiple speakers sort of speaking in, you know, sort of rapid fire succession or talking over each other. Um, so this is a, just a convention that you might use where, you know, in place of speaker labels indicating who's talking because we have a rapid back and forth, we use a, a dash to just indicate that there's an exchange between these, uh, these two speakers. Okay. Yeah. And this sort of uh, is an example of the syntactic way to break up captions, right? Yeah. So syntax is a you know is a is a really important consideration when you're breaking up your chunking your text for 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 captioning um, you want to try to group together information that uh, you know that that makes that makes it easiest for people to sort of process what's what's being presented to them on on screen so in this example you'll see the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And we've split the line at the quick brown, and then fox jumps over the lazy dog on, on, the, on the line below. But if we switch to the, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad example. This is the... <laughs> yeah, and it's a, it's a less than ideal example, ex exactly. Um, but if we, if we rearrange really just one word, uh, we get a much better result by moving Fox up to the to the line above. Um, that you know that that word pair Brown Fox they really sort of go together, and we have a break now at sort of the the highest syntactic note, right? Uh, so we're getting into some linguistics here, but you want to keep sort of like information and you know, units of text that make sense together, group together, and not split at just arbitrary points. And that makes for something that's much easier for, for users to process. Right, and then you also mentioned proportionality. Yes, exactly. So, you know, our, our brains are sort of trained to scan text that is in, you know, more or less even chunks a lot more efficiently than having text that's you know highly un unbalanced. So when you see a caption like this, uh, it becomes much harder for users to read this caption because it's so un unbalanced. Um, so you know, ideally, you're looking for something that's you know closer to a rectangle shape instead of like a real you know sort of like sharp. Uh, triangle in terms of the geometry of the the shape of your caption um, but at the at the same time I think it's important to note that um, there's there's trade-offs there's all of these elements you know timing the length the syntax proportionality um, and it's not that you know one of them wins out every, every time you have to sort of balance these different competing interests and come up with the best caption segment given the constraints that that you're that you're working with so it might be the case that you know by going a little bit longer on a caption you end up with something that's much more proportional or by you know affecting the syntax you know maybe you're not breaking at the at the highest syntactic note but you know, as a result, you get something that works in terms of the timing and length, uh, you know, of the clip that you're that you're working with. So it's very much a, a trade-off, and I think that this is where uh, you know experienced captioners add a lot of a lot of value because they can they have the experience to be able to uh, consider all of these elements, make trade-offs, and generate caption segments that are 
you know, easy for people to, to process on screen. And so um, it sounds like there's a lot of factors at hand in creating good chunks. Yeah, and this is also an area where, where we're applying a lot of uh, automation in, in sync words in, in the chunking process. Um, we've, uh, we've really put a lot of effort in creating high quality chunks with the, with the, with the sync word software. Um, we went over, you know, four factors. There are actually 21 different, you know, variables that sync words considers and it sort of, you know, balances, considers all these different factors, assigns scores to different segments, and then it sort of picks the winners, you know, uh, one caption following the other, what, you know, what, uh, what would end up being the best segments for uh, a, a particular video. So uh, this is also, you know, a time-consuming process in, in order to you know, approach it in a, you know, for a human captioner to approach this task and to do it um, very effectively also takes, you know, a lot of uh, time and effort. And again, automation can, can really help provide a consistent high level of quality while speeding that process and, you know, also providing some, some cost savings in, in the process. Right, right. I want to get back to those five key elements of quality captioning. Can you talk more about position? Sure. So, yeah, so, so positioning is one of the elements that uh, I mentioned earlier that SyncWords doesn't really address. Um, <clears throat> so when you're placing your captions on, on screen, you want to place them in a place where they don't interfere with the rest of the content uh, that's that's being viewed, and again, we have to keep in mind that you know captions are being used simultaneously with the video. Um, so you know, placing captions over a person's face is probably like a poor choice that leads to a poor user user experience. But I think uh, you know, it, practically, you know, there's a lot of uh, videos that are being produced for the web, and certainly for television where there's a lot of important information on screen that that appears in the, in the same place where captions traditionally appear which is sort of bottom bottom center and you want to try to address that by moving your captions placing them in in a, in a spot where they won't obscure other important information uh, on on screen for users um, in in terms of automation, as I as I already mentioned, you know, SyncWords doesn't really deal with positioning at all. It doesn't have uh, computer vision capabilities, so uh, it's not really uh, aware, and it doesn't consider how to place your captions. So this is something that certainly you know might require you know human intervention. So even if you are using SyncWords, it's something. Uh, to consider it doesn't address the full, uh, you know, range of, uh, you know, caption quality from, from, from A to Z, it still needs some, somebody to go in and make tweaks to ensure that you're providing a good experience to your users. And finally, I, if you could just talk really quickly to style. How does that impact the user experience of captioning? Yeah, and, you know, I get, I get, questions about this a, a, a lot. So, um, you know, when we, when we experience captions, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a visual element, right? So it's a visual uh, experience. And, you know, aside from the, the, the content, people also pay attention to the, to the styling of captions. Oops. Are you guys still getting visual? You see the Audio? slide? For some reason, it looks like the, uh, Here we the go. slide cut out for some reason. 
right. Okay. We're, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, my my preference, and you know, doing some user interviews and 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 some 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 research, you know, I found a lot of uh, like agreement is that uh, generally captions that are bottom centered um, that are in in white or another bright color and like using a, a font which is sufficiently wide um, provide uh, you know a good experience visually with captions in terms of the ease of um, sort of scanning reading the information um, it's also, you know, I think something that's also, you know, very personal. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a very big fan of the ability to customize captions that's offered by uh, YouTube's video player. So you can actually go in and customize the size, color, uh, font, and a number of other attributes. Um, but I, I personally find this pleasing and I find uh, a lot of agreement among users that uh, we've asked similar questions about. Great, great. Um, and so you mentioned that you apply automation to the text chunking in SyncWords. Are there are other areas that you also use automation? Yeah. So the 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 timing uh, is is automated, right? Uh, and as the slide says, so we, so we do not automate transcription. Uh, our cardinal rule. Uh, we the timing in in sync words uses uh, automation, and that's done at the at the at the word level. The you know the the formation and evaluation of caption segments, all of those chunks, um, and how they're split across lines. That's uh, automated, and we. We, we've really been focusing on a lot of tools that help users make edits, you know, in the case of inaccurate transcripts or something like that, to their files on the fly. So that it's, it's not uh, necessarily automation, but it provides a very efficient workflow to make edits and, 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 and changes. So I see how automation saves time by having a computer do the work rather than a person, just as use, using a sewing machine is faster than hand stitching. Um, but I feel like there's sort of this belief that to get quality work, it has to be done by a person. And you're saying that's not true. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that every aspect of the process has to be done by a person. And again, I'm, I'm a strong believer that, you know, technology and automation can really help improve the quality of, of captioning. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not saying, you know, let's get people out of this, you know, out of this field, out, out, out of this industry. I think that people are is essential. Um, one in, in that initial step, as I, as I mentioned, in terms of creating the, the, the transcript, and it requires a lot of, you know, a lot of attention and, and skill, and there's plenty of room for, for, for creativity there, uh, you know, as, as well. Um, but I think that there's certain things that are just handled far more efficiently and with much greater precision by technology, and we should be looking to leverage that to aid us in captioning more media, expanding access for users, while at the same time improving the, the quality of, of the captions that we're, that we're, that we're putting out there. Um, I'd like to explore this idea of style some more in terms of personal preference. What works for one person doesn't work for everyone. Is there an absolute best practice for user experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that there's uh, there's subjective right judgments for for sure. Um, and we we just addressed one. So with regard to styling, you may have, a certain preference for how captions are displayed, I may have a different preference. Um, 
when it comes to transcription, similar, like, you know, you might approach your transcripts one way, I might approach my transcripts another way. There's no absolute best way, I would say, to, to create them. Although you could ask your, your users and, and get feedback from them, and I think a lot of what positive user experiences are, are about is talking to your users and understand uh, what it is that they respond to and uh, you know how they react to it um, but even when you know even when it comes to issues of of timing and, and chunking there are you know uh, some people with a lot of expertise in the field that we've spoken to and you know um, you know uh, you know, sort of worked with them. Um, you know, in 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 the captioning world, you know, of course, you're in in the U.S. broadcast market. Anyways, you're limited to 32 characters per line. So, a lot of people come up with best practices working within those constraints. In the subtitling world, there's a you know, there's not as many constraints. So they have different perspectives on what provides an ideal user experience. Um, you know, I have seen, um, you know, people advocate for displaying captions, uh, perhaps a frame in advance of when audio or the speech is spoken in, in the video because, you know, an argument is made that that sort of helps people uh, process and read the, ca the caption or, or subtitle. Uh, more easily because it comes, you know, just in advance of when it's when it's spoken. So one of the things that we've tried to do in in sync words is to not prejudge and say, oh, this is the absolute best way to to create your captions, and you know you're gonna you know whether you like it or not is to provide flexibility so that people can actually implement their own, you know. Uh, vision of what provides a positive user experience. So just as an example, there's, uh, oh great, so there's, <laughs> yes you can, there's, well certain, certain caption file formats allow for, you know, for, for styling, but many actually don't. Many, uh, you know, sort of leave that up to how captions are styled in the video player you're, you're watching them or how your TV decodes and, and d displays captions to you. Um, but, there, but there are some really cool features in sync words, like for example, you can ask sync words to close the gaps between captions, right? So you could say, if there's, you know, less than a second or two seconds between my captions, just have the first caption flow into the next one because some people feel that that's a more positive user experience. Um, other, um, other users like to enforce what's called caption separation or subtitle separation where you, be, so as you have one caption transition into the next, you pull that caption off you allow a frame or two of blank space before you display the, the, the next caption. Um, so I think that in, in a lot of respects, user experience is, is subjective, and I think that um, a lot of the user research that we've done certainly, um, but I, I would say generally with regard to captioning, there's a, there's a dearth of uh, good user research out there. Um, I think as people learn more and more uh, about how users interact with captions, what their experiences with them are, are like, our understanding of what provides an ideal user experience will continue to evolve and hopefully improve. Great. Um, I I know we're, we're coming up on the end of the hour, so I just kind of want to zoom ahead and ask you um, what about one of the things that fascinates me is how you've managed to automate such complex aspects of creating captions. Can you speak to how it works a little bit and then we'll start answering some of the questions that have come in? Sure. 
Yeah, and I, and I know in, in advance of the webinar, we actually had some, some questions on that as well. Um, and like, you know, some, somebody will ask, you know, so you're using, are you using Dragon or are you using, um, you know, this and that other tool? And uh, we've, when we started out, we looked at a lot of different tools and they really weren't working for, <laughs> for what we wanted to achieve in, in terms of, of caption automation. So the, the, the speech engine and everything else that we do in, in, in SyncWords is all homegrown. Um, this year alone, we've gone through three major kind of like updates and iterations to the engine, which times and chunks content, and each time it really represents, you know, a, a leap forward, not, not so much in terms of you know, timing, uh, you know, transcripts to videos and, you know, in learning and, uh, you know, education, but really in that more challenging material that's used in broadcast, et cetera. Uh, sync words from the, from the get-go, from earlier this year, it kind of, it nails the timing and does, it creates effective chunks for all kinds of content that comes in that's, relatively clear audio and you know free of, uh, of of any problems but it's those more challenging domains when you have a you know a talk show where three people are speaking over each other you know how do you accurately time that kind of information or when you have lots of music and and other things happening at the same time how do you deal with um, timing and chunking of of information um, so there's, uh, you know, a lot of what's behind sync words is, you know, is machine intelligence or, or you know, machine learning. The latest uh, work that we're doing with regards to the automation in sync words utilizes deep neural networks, uh, which is, you know, fascinating field and uh, it's yielding some, you know, tremendous results with regard to caption automation. We, we I, I see here NLP, yeah, we're using natural language processing. There's a whole bunch of other rules and algorithms that, that we're using well beyond um, that. Uh, so that's, that's part of our approach to, to the work that we do in, in sync words. Cool. Um, I had this, we received a question before the webinar um, that I wanted to address. Um, came in via email. It says, I find one of the biggest problems is the lack of awareness about um, awareness out in the general public that people think that Google's YouTube auto captioning is enough. Um, I rarely use Google's auto captioning output and usually start a captioning job by scratch. Is there any real value added from the auto captions ca caption tracks? And, I know you spoke to that briefly before when we were talking about transcription, but um, maybe you'd like to address that a little bit further. Sure. Um, yeah, I've, I, I had my, you know, kind of like, I said that that, you know, is really one of the, you know, poorer user experiences that people could have with, captions online when it's when it's all fully automated. I just want to make that clear because what YouTube offers is the ability to have YouTube start to finish, generate the transcript, time it, etc. And I think one of the slides that you had up, Sarah, um, the, the the name of the of the of the guys escapes me, but they have like, you know, these 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 funny videos, which are captioned, by the way, where 
they they go through they go through a script they're talking back and forth they run it through the youtube you know auto captioner and what it comes up with is just completely unrelated and nonsense uh related to their speech and then they'll do this a couple of times they'll feed that same script that was generated they'll use that same script that was generated by google read that out run it through the auto captions and you'll yet again get something completely different from from what was just read and actually generated by by YouTube itself. I think that YouTube does have some useful tools um, that could be used in, in captioning. So for example, they offer a feature that allows you to time some elements in a in a transcript to the to the media. Um, and uh, I mean, I'll, I'll sort of leave it at that. I don't think that they they do a fantastic job at that, and I, I don't think that they do a great job when it comes uh, to chunking of content and a lot of the other things that we're really focused on in, in sync words. But I, I hope that answered the question. Um, another question came in. Is using mixed case lettering a standard or just a preference? Uh, back when this person was working with a captioning company, they displayed all of their captions with caps, and they just assumed that that was the industry standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a, that's an interesting question. I w I would say certainly a lot of people that I have, have spoken to uh, do do not appreciate captions in 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 all caps, and I think that. Uh, it becomes like a readability issue, right? So if you are um, if you are displaying your captions in in all caps, it's a little bit overwhelming and it makes it less readable for the users compared to 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 mixed case captions. Um, you know, there's there's a there's a history behind why a lot of broadcast captioning is was you know, was and still is done in, in, in caps. And whatever those original reasons were like 20 years ago or 30 years ago that related to like decoders and how they displayed some specific characters, I think it's long since been, you know, irrelevant. Um, and uh, I would, you know, encourage everyone who's captioning their media, whether it's for broadcast or for, um, you know, certainly for offline content uh, to provide mixed case captions because they provide a more positive user experience. They provide greater usability. Um, there's, you know, certainly no reason that you should be, um, there's, no, there's no convention that suggests or advocates for all cap, uh, for captions in all caps as opposed to to mix case, at least not none that I'm aware of. Yeah, and we actually just got a comment saying definitely mix case is preferred. All caps is from the old days when better options weren't available. Um, yeah, uh, there's I have to dig it up. There's a very interesting e explanation or history as to how this convention came about in in broadcast. And my understanding is that. Um, you know, if it was ever relevant at all, it was like 30 years ago, and it certainly has no, it hasn't had any bearing for, for a long, long time. Um, and then I think I have one more question, um, and it was addressed in the chat, but does verbatim transcript actually hinder the user experience of captions? I usually, I personally find having to read all of the ums and uhs, et cetera, to be distracting. Uh, that that's a that's a great question. So, <laughs> no, I I I absolutely agree with that point. So verbatim doesn't mean literally <laughs> verbatim. Um, you know, someone pointed out to me that I I say a lot of you knows or or something like that. So if there's a lot of ums and ahas and you knows and well this that, um, I would recommend actually that you remove those from the transcript because they don't provide any meaningful you know information to the 
to the user. We want to provide you know concise information. We want it to be accurate. You know, I guess the the other extreme uh, that you know I've experienced, and you know perhaps some of you have as as well, is you transcribe something, send it to somebody, and then they will edit it for style and conciseness, and it ends up looking more like an article than it does a, a transcript of of what's spoken, and that's very much appropriate for you know an article on your website, but it's not really appropriate for uh, for for captioning. You want the the captions to be concise and free of a lot of you know superfluous words, but otherwise it should track the actual dialogue and and what's being spoken. All right, so I want to ask one more question, and I think this will wrap it up. Um, SyncWords has an auto timing mechanism for captioning. How accurate is it? Um, it's uh, well, it's 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 tremendously accurate. Um, it depends. Like I, I kind of mentioned it a little earlier. So it's it depends on the kind of material that it's that it's using at the time. So. Uh, <clears throat> if you have content that's relatively, you know, clean, right? It's free of a lot of like noise and uh, like all of these uh, sort of difficult audio conditions. Uh, SyncWords provides millisecond level accuracy at, you know, close to a hundred percent of the of the time. Um, under these, you know, adverse conditions that I mentioned earlier, music and people speaking and noises and people talking over each other and, you know, a lot of sort of like difficult circumstances like music, you know, lyrics overlapping with other people speaking. Uh, these cases, SyncWords performs I would say in a like a 95% or higher accuracy range and uh you know as I said with each sort of major iteration of the of the engine that score keeps increasing and I'm very confident that uh even under the most difficult conditions sync words will uh will approach 100% accuracy very soon. And what's key related to that in terms of our, what, what we're working on is when you have that, you know, those edge cases in that 5% where something may be wrong in terms of timing or there's an inaccuracy in the transcript is to provide users with a friendly, you know, easy workflow to make corrections to that so that you, you don't have to start from scratch. All right, I think that, that wraps it up for questions and we're just over the hour mark. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today and thank you, Sam, for sharing all of this information about uh, the user experience of captioning. Thanks to everybody out there and thank you, Sarah, for putting together all the slides. They look great. Thanks. Uh, I guess that's it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.